Hey guys, I hope you're all having a really, really beautiful day. Just a reminder before I get started on this video that I'm now offering online coaching services for anyone interested in going vegan or downsizing their stuff in their life and waste-free living as well. All of the details for the coaching is in the description below and there's also information about it on my Instagram page on coaching on the highlights reel so go and check it out and if you don't follow me on Instagram go and check it out now I post on there quite a lot especially on Instagram stories I post on there almost every day so go and check it out I just want to know that I'm not perfect I make mistakes all the time when it comes to you know, parenting and minimalism and simplifying and I'm learning very much as I go as well and I want you guys to remember that we're all learning we do not live in a minimalist world so if you kind of feel like sometimes you're fighting against the wave of consumerism and there's just like an endless amount of stuff coming into your house you are definitely not alone I absolutely feel like that a lot of the time as well but, all right, let's start with pocket money because this has totally revolutionized the way that we handle toys with Romeo. Up until the start of this year, we were not giving Ro regular pocket money. We didn't know what to do about it. So what we do now is that we give Romeo $5 a week and that money is unconditional. So he doesn't have to earn that money. He gets it regardless. He doesn't get it taken away if he you know, doesn't do chores or anything like that. If he wants to earn more pocket money on top of that, he can earn more money by doing chores for like one or two dollars per chore, depending on the type of chore that he does. So what I found with the pocket money, which is really amazing, is that last year and probably the year before as well, we just found that Romeo was always asking to buy us toys and we didn't really know when to say no, when to say yes, and how to handle when he really wants a toy and really desires it and continues to want it beyond leaving the store for quite a while and it's not really something that really resonates with us like it might be a plastic toy or just a toy that we wouldn't personally pick out ourselves or it might be something that's not kind of ethically made and in alignment with our values and what I do with this is because as much as I think it's really important to be the role model for your children if you enforce stuff too much I believe when it comes to your own values and you say you can't do that you can't do that you can't do that then I really feel like they're gonna fight against that and rebel almost and feel like they're missing out so what we do is if there's something that Romeo is really really wanting to purchase and it's not something that we personally want to buy for him then he has the opportunity to save up for that item and buy it with his own pocket money and what we do with the pocket money as well is that we buy him with our, with our money we buy uh, books we buy clothing for him and we pay for homeschooling things as well and there'll be the odd time when we get him things as well and obviously we purchase him gifts for Christmas and his birthday so the next one is decluttering toys. So what I do is that I just sit down with Romeo and we go through the toys together. And and I might recommend things like, you know, I know you've been wanting to get this for a while. I, I really don't want you to get that toy unless you've gotten rid of an old toy. And so a really great way of doing this is having a maximum space. For each type of toy so you might have a basket and in that basket there's cars and if he wants to get a new car you know that's really really fantastic okay you want to get a new car that's awesome buddy I really want you to get this car that you're wanting to get uh, with your pocket money but we really need to get rid of one of your other cars that you're not playing with in order to do that so make space for it and we've got like bookshelves in our current the, the house that we're in and so with books uh, the rule is is that all of the books have to fit on the shelves and so if he wants to bring new books in then we have to donate a couple of the other books to make space so that there's not too many of them and that just keeps that that limit and he chooses obviously he chooses what books 
he wants to donate and if he really doesn't want to donate them then he's always got the choice of not getting the new item until he feels ready to let go of that thing so one in one out essentially the other tip that I definitely have that follows on from that is to keep the toys organized really really well so spend a little bit of time and find a, an organizing system that works for you guys we've recently discovered these awesome drawstring bags um, our neighbor Laura and Murray they have them for their kids for their Duplo which is like big Lego if you guys don't know what Duplo is but these are Lego bags they're so awesome and basically it's a drawstring bag that opens out and it becomes a playmat and so the Lego or Duplo can stay on the playmat while they're playing and then instead of having to like pack everything away as you just draw, pull the drawstring up and the bag pulls up and it goes back in there and they are so simple and easy you can get them super cheap on eBay He's so tired Okay guys so I filmed the whole video, or I thought I did, but my camera storage actually filled up about halfway through the video. Hey! And now it's a lot later in the day, and so I'm filming the rest of it now. <laughs> and if they the headphones. <laughs> there we go! I highly, highly recommend that you encourage and get your t kids to clean up after themselves before they get a new toy out. So if they say like they've got a friend over and they're playing a board game and they've had so much fun playing it and they're ready to move on, I just uh, what I do is I say, hi right, guys, hey, you know, before you pull out the next thing, we need to put the board game away. And what I find is that if you do this pretty kind of systematically the kids will definitely get used to it it took Romeo a few weeks to get used to the system but what happens otherwise is that all the toys just get pulled out like Romeo definitely will just pull everything out and then the playroom is just covered in toys and what I tend to find is that especially when his friends are here is that that will happen and then they'll just go outside and play because the room is so chaotic and messy that they don't tend to have the space, uh, the mental clarity and the physical space to get into really, really deep play with like one set of toys. And so it's so much, so much better all round for the kids and for us as the parents to get them to tidy up after themselves and put away a toy that they finished playing with it before they get a new toy out. From a gentle parenting point of view, I think one of the best ways to get kids to, you know, clean up after themselves and cooperate in general is just inviting play into whatever you're trying to encourage them or get them to do. Make it playful and fun and it's so much easier, you know, you can get the kids to you know, have a race to see who can put this away the fastest or this the fastest or you can have little voices for the toys and the toys can, you know, play along with them. Uh, Romeo is really into dinosaurs at the moment and he's got some dinosaur toys and what we do with the dinosaurs is at the end of play, the dinosaurs go and have a nap or they have a sleep. It's bedtime now, the dinosaurs need to go have a sleep and they have a little shelf in his room and they lie down and he puts little blankets on them. It's it's just a really easy way to get kids to cooperate in a way that you're connecting with them basically. You right, Bubby? Invite play into every area of your parenting and it makes it so much fun and you will find that you get a new level of cooperation. You can also do things like put some music on while the kids are cleaning up and again it just makes it really fun and lighthearted. My next tip is an eco-friendly tip as well and it will save you money as well and that is definitely to utilize hand-me-downs and second-hand clothing. So often we have things lying around as parents that we really don't need anymore and it's really nice to pass it on to people so that they can enjoy it and it gets more life out of it. And the next one is just a little <laughs> tip from this is something that I have learnt 
the hard way and that I have made um, this mistake so many times myself and I just wanted to share it because I want to show you guys that I'm learning all the time as well and I definitely do not have this all figured out even though I've been a minimalist for years. If you have the rule of one in and one out, so getting rid of a toy before bringing in a new one, definitely make sure that the old one is donated, like sent to the, the op shop before bringing in the new toy. I made this mistake last week. I purchased a, a toy for Ocean and Romeo to share, so I paid for it because it was one for them to share instead of just something that was just for Romeo out of his pocket money. And the deal was that I was going to purchase this, but I really wanted him to, Romeo, to first donate a wooden airport toy that was quite large that he had that he just hadn't used in a number of months and he was more than happy to donate it and so I said okay well I'll get it I just need to know that you're definitely going to donate that one and he was more than happy to do that and then when I went to donate it he was not happy about it and he really 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 wanted to keep it and so obviously this could be avoided really easily and I've learned the hard way and that the toys have to be literally out of the house and donated, given away, before the new toy comes in. Hello. There's a peacock here and he belongs to the beautiful neighbours and he's so beautiful and he often comes up on our veranda and Ocean is entranced by him so that's what she's staring at right now. <laughs> And my last tip is toy rotations. So what you do basically is you just have a certain amount of toys that are accessible to the kids at a certain time and then you put the rest of them away in another cupboard. If there is something in there that they they want to play with then what I'll do is I'll just say all right you know you, Ray, you've got to you got to put this stuff away please before I get that out for you why don't you clean it up and I'll go and get the board game or whatever it is out and it also really gives your kids a chance to feel like they can get into they can get into really really gentle baby with mommy's hair that hurts mama they can get into really really deep play this way and really uh, really enjoy the simplicity of of having that really deep, beautiful, imaginative play with a small amount of toys. And then when they start to tire of those, you put them away in the cupboard and you pull other toys out. And it kind of makes them feel like they're getting new toys as well because they haven't played with those or seen them in a while. Have a beautiful day, guys. Love you guys and thank you for watching. Through the smoke, through the smoke, in the sapphire. In your eyes, you pull me close, pull me close <laughs> And keep me up all night And you know, you know I'm drunk on the vibe And we're moving fast, not going slow And this love that we fell in I don't really care if the skies are falling As long as I'm next to you if the wolves surround me Cause when I'm with you, I'm bulletproof And if you ever say that